Good morning everybody, welcome to the autumn episode. And the reason I think it might just be one episode is because the weather here in the UK for the last couple of weeks has just been heavy, solid, consistent rain combined with loads and loads of wind. And obviously since autumn is my favorite time of the year, I want to get out and shoot some woodland, get some amazing colors. And the fear is, that all of the leaves will be gone by the time that they finally turn to the colours I want them to be. And it feels like autumn is just arriving later and later in the year. At the time of recording this, it's late November. So to make sure that I've not missed my favourite time of the year, first of all, I'm wearing my lucky jacket. This brings out colour in the autumn woodlands. Secondly, I've been visiting lots of different woodlands for the last couple of weeks, just, just checking on them, just keeping an eye on them seeing if they're cooked, seeing if they're ready for me and my camera yet. Uh, last weekend, I came to this woodland with my friend Jamie Fielding and we had some incredible conditions. We got some mist at sunrise. I didn't film it because I just wanted to concentrate on the photography. But this morning, something funny is going on. Let me show you. I'm not sure if this is gonna come across on camera, but I've checked a few different apps. Sunrise is at 7.25 this morning and it says here that there is zero zero, low, medium, and high level clouds. And that is the same on several different weather apps. They are all saying zero clouds, but it's actually 100%. I know that weather apps can be a little bit off sometimes, but they're 100% off. So I'm not entirely sure I'm gonna get any winning photographs today, but I still wanted to make a video because I just love being out in the autumn. So I started to get worried on my commute to work from Shoreham by Sea to Brighton. All of the trees are now bare. No leaves left whatsoever. So I go out to woods, all the leaves are still on the trees. Not only that, they're still green. And although woodland photography, I think, should be a very calming experience, the fact that we might have this small window of opportunity where, realistically, the sun comes up, I'm at work, the sun goes down whilst I'm at work, that leaves me with Saturdays and Sundays to actually get out with my camera. Some of you might be in a slightly more fortunate position where you can go out during the week, but I only have the weekends, which realistically means that I've probably only got maybe one or two days to capture autumn at its best. And if you combine that with the potential risk that all of these winds have actually been making for a very messy woodland, what you've got to do is find a woods which doesn't have loads of fallen down trees or even less than that, loads of brambles and branches and everything. They're falling off the trees in these storms and just making for a very, very messy foreground. So what you have to do is find yourself a wood with a clean foreground, which is not easy, but I've found one. Now, although I make YouTube videos, I actually absorb a lot of YouTube content as well. And one of the things that I was doing a couple of weeks ago, I follow other landscape photographers, I won't go into too much detail, but many of them have a very, very bright looking jacket and they often get into their photographs and that might be the thumbnail to their video. Now, not wanting to follow a trend, I thought, do you know what, I don't actually do that very often at all and I go to some really nice locations. So sometimes it would be nice for me to just get in the frame and then take a photograph, whether that's for the thumbnail, or just for my own records. So what I did was I ordered a handful of coats, about five. I didn't keep them all, sent some of them back. And I went for some quite Larry colors. I had blue, orange, green, red, and I laid them all out on my lounge floor. And I thought, I can't do it, this is too garish. This is just not me. So in the end, I actually went for this. Now, whether this comes across as very, very bright orange on the camera, it's not actually. It's a very subtle, burnt, orangey, reddy brown. This is me being as loud and leery as I can be. This is burnt orange. I kind of like it. It suits autumn and from now on, this is my lucky jacket. So if I'm wearing this, statistically, this is a very unlucky jacket because the weather conditions have not panned out today at all. So I guess I'm gonna have to take a selfie of me in the woods in my lucky jacket. So whilst we wait for any sort of hope of direct sunlight, I was expecting zero clouds and therefore I was anticipating shooting these woods, backlit, sun coming through, maybe some sun stars, I might be over that. It's a, one of my favorites, but I think I might be overdoing it a little bit. 
Um, so typically when I come to a place like this, what I'm looking for is a tree that stands out from the crowd. And that could be a tree with a bit of character. It could just be a tree which has got some leaves on it at low level and that would be surrounded by trees which just doesn't have any greenery to it. I'm just looking for a main character, a focal point, because otherwise what you can end up doing is just photographing the light or the light rays. And then a viewer will look at your photograph and just think, that's beautiful, but I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to be looking at. So this is what I look for. I'm looking around a woodland and I'm trying to find some characters. So here's a good example. Whether or not this comes across on camera or not, I don't know, but I've got one tree here, which is surrounded by trees with less character. And you can see here, this tree has got another very small tree branch growing out of it. And that has created these low level branches. Depending upon where the light might hit this tree, and if the light were to be on this tree and not everything else, this would be an example of what I would point my camera at. Here's another great example. This tree here, right in the middle. I'm not quite sure if I photographed this last weekend but it's the only tree in this bank that has any branches or leaves at low level. So you can just imagine this shot, and I, I may have photographed this last weekend. Sun comes up behind there, light rays, a bit of mist, which is, I'm describing the conditions that I got last week. There's your shot. And I'm not saying those are the only things you should be looking out for if you come to woods, uh, but they are the things that I look for because that is what I'm attracted to. So I like to find trees with a bit of character, a bit of personality, and then I think that that guides your viewer where you wanted them to look in your photograph. Last weekend when we came out to this misty woodland, it was different to normal landscape photography for me. And the reason for that is there wasn't a rush. It wasn't 30 minutes of superb light. Okay, let's pack up and go home. The mist literally lingered for hours. And because we weren't so dependent upon the light, just the conditions that we were in. It was so much more of a relaxing situation to be in. Ideally, it would always be like that. You can just chill out, go out for a couple of hours with your camera and come home with some amazing shots. I know it doesn't always work like that, but when you do get a mist, it seems to just take the pressure off in terms of time scales. You don't have that small window of light because you can just, if you've got the freedom to be out for a couple of hours, that was last weekend. Look at this. What has happened here? That is a character. Now, in an ideal situation, I would know a lot more about species of trees because that would help me understand my subject better and therefore get to a woods at the optimal time of the year. However, I do not have that knowledge. So the intro sequence of this video, all of that B-roll, I've collected over the last couple of weeks visiting different places. First of all, I went to Windsor with my kids. That was at the end of October. And those particular trees at the end of October were vibrant orange, browns and reds. It was incredible. And that was about five weeks ago. So understanding different species of trees and different woodland will help you get better woodland photography. It would be good for me to understand what species of tree is growing out of my head, for example. So I could say, oh, that is an elm tree growing out of my head. This is a bad composition for a video. You see, you see where I'm going with this? Now, if you don't have a woodland as clean as this, then the alternative, although it is slightly cheating, is to go to a national park. Somewhere local to me is Sheffield Park. I visited there a couple of weeks ago, but that was predominantly just to be out with my kids and my family. I got a lot of the B-roll there, and that's because they've got such a variety of different species of tree and flowers and everything like that. You can come away with some really great looking autumn photographs. So providing you don't include lots of general public and things in it, you could probably get away with getting some really nice autumn colors. So let's just call that plan B. If you don't have a really nice woodland like this near to you, then head to a national trust. Seems like the perfect place to pose with my new jacket.
Now, if you already haven't checked out my friend Jamie Fielding's photography, I'll put a link in the description, but if anybody knows how to shoot woodland photography, it's him. That is his specialist subject. And whenever I come out to woodland, I'm literally just following in his shadow. Also, since it's leading up to Christmas, he's got a calendar. So if you want an awesome landscape, Sussex-based calendar, all of the money goes to a good cause. So I'll put a link in the description. I didn't film last weekend when I was out with Jamie because once again, I was just concentrating on the photography. I'm not an expert when it comes to woodland photography. So I'm always trying to improve that. As somebody who comes from a landscape background and architecture background, my instinct is to include the top of a tree. For example, if I shot a building, I never chop the building in half. I always want to include the entire building. So it's rude to chop off the roof. When it comes to woodland photography, if you include the entire tree, then you run into the problem of having too much sky or any sky at all. But typical landscape photography, of course you want to include the sky. The sky is where all the drama is happening. If you're doing a long exposure, you want the dragon clouds and the movement and the energy. When it comes to woodland photography, it's the opposite. Cut out the sky, it's the enemy. It's the brightest part of the image and it will distract your viewer away from looking at the trees and instead they'll just look at the most contrasty part of your image. If you've enjoyed this video, then you'll probably enjoy the video that I made last year, which I think I titled, I struggle with woodland photography. And even a year later, I still struggle with woodland photography. But that morning, wow, did I get some conditions. So I'll put a link to that at the end of this video so you can keep on enjoying my content. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't think we're gonna get any great conditions. Either the conditions that I saw here last weekend or the conditions that were predicted for this morning. But what I'll do now is I'll share some of my favorite images that I've been capturing over the last couple of weeks from various locations around Sussex. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.